If you want to know how to make animated lower thirds for your productions in either Ecamm Live or OBS using Keynote, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and today we're talking about animated lower thirds, the sort of thing that's just popped in at the bottom corner there with my name on it. And I'm going to show you how we can make those in Keynote quickly and simply. Now, actually, I made a full video tutorial about exactly how you can go from an empty OBS uh, setting or a fresh install rather, all the way through to having a fully kitted out production environment complete with multiple scenes, overlays. I walked through exactly how to make all of those overlays, some of them static, some of them animated and then we went through to how to actually configure that all with Stream Deck as well so you could literally go from zero to a fully ready production environment and the video itself was four and a half hours and as is the case with most of my videos uh, they are sort of non-stop non-edited so I was certainly a little bit parched by the end of that and needed the odd coffee or two by the end of it but what I thought was maybe people don't want to sit down and watch four and a half hours straight and so it might be better to break it all up into smaller bite-sized pieces for those that are just interested in a particular part or want to take it more in manageable doses. And so that's what I've done with most of it and there was a section in there where I covered how to make animated lower thirds. However, the uh, that section in particular I felt could be improved upon because I was uh, sharing, I was doing demo mode on my Ecamm Live so it was sharing my full screen and then and I was also doing my uh, uh, screen sharing to show you what I was doing in Keynote. And unfortunately, that made that the Keynote part was a little bit small on the screen because I'd neglected to come out of demo mode. So what I thought is rather than cut to that now, I would just actually redo it so that you can uh, get the full screen experience of it instead. But incidentally, all of the downloads, all of the, sorry, all of the templates and the uh, the overlays and things like that that I made during that big tutorial are available on my website. So you can go to uh, takeonetech.io and then at the top of the website, you'll see actually the video at the top of the web page now is that full four and a half hour tutorial. Uh, but then below that, you'll find a place where you can just download all of the uh, the uh, overlays, the icons that we made for Stream Deck for that particular a tutorial and then also I've included the original source files so the templates that you can use as templates to make your overlays yourself. Perhaps it's easy if I actually show you what they look like and then we can get on to making these lower thirds. So if I come over to my screen sharing and I've got my keynote open and this is actually the file that you would get if you downloaded that pack from the website. It is a an overlay uh, pack with five different uh, formats and the first one we have is a uh, basically for a full screen view and then we've also got one there with a picture in picture and I used that for a an example showing you how to do a screen sharing with your picture in the side uh, and then we also use that for another uh, view as well and then we've also got the two side by side views as well and this one I used for an example was a top down camera and then a normal camera in the other side. Uh, we al I also show you how to make a countdown timer for your live streams and we include the uh, the uh, scene for that then there's some other elements that go on there but we add that in in um, Ecamm Live itself or you could do this in OBS of course and then the next one we had was a sort of YouTube end screen uh, slide and I've done a video specifically about how to make YouTube end screens as well and get all the timings right so I'll link to that one as well uh, and then we made this one which was our little lower third and so what I thought I'd do is I'd just take you through the process of actually making that again and in fact if I just come out here and show you what it looks like when it animates Come over to my animation. I'll run you through how to do all this after, but I just thought I'd give you a quick preview of it so you can see what happens. So you can see that it builds out like that. And that is what I'm going to show you exactly how to do because it really isn't difficult at all. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, just have a little think about lower thirds and the construction of them and how we might make them. And so, uh, yeah, it's uh, there's not a great deal to them. And there's all sorts of different ways that you can change it up to make it a different style and shape. So I thought, well, I'll make something a bit different to that. As I say, you can get this one in the download pack and I'll just play, play that again so you can see how it actually builds out. And uh, we're going to make that right now. But I thought I'd probably do something a little bit different because, as I say, you can get that version in the download. But let's make something a little bit different to see how it looks. So I'll create a new slide. 
And then what we want to do, I'll just copy this over. This was my sort of dummy logo, if you like, just as a sort of placeholder. So let me grab that and put that into the scene for the, uh, to start with. And then I thought what we could do is we could perhaps do something that was more like a, maybe like a sort of pill shape. And so what we're going to do is, in fact, I think I need to just backtrack for one step because I've come into this, but obviously you need to know how to set it up from the start, just in case you're not familiar. So let's actually start a new uh, document, shall we? I've copied that one anyway. So let me just come into Keynote and I'll go to File, New. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? <laughs> so when you open Keynote, we want to make sure that we come into uh, the, just choose a blank presentation and we would come into the this section here where it says wide at the top just make sure we're in wide format and uh, the other option is you could either have standard or wide but I think wide will fit most people's video productions much better so we'll click on create and that will open us up into a blank presentation and there's a couple of things we want to do first let's just get rid of these boxes around here and the next thing we want to do is make this transparent. Now, if you go and watch the full tutorial, I'll show you uh, the importance of uh, making your things transparent and how you can do it on the master slide. So uh, here you would click on edit slide layout because we can just change the background here to change to no fill, that makes it transparent. But you could actually do this on all slides by clicking edit slide master. And then you would just come into this slide master here and then you would change that background to be no fill as well and then click done. We can delete all of these other slide masters because we only need one. Uh, but again, I'll link to the other videos because it's probably better rather than covering over all of that old ground. Uh, you can watch that in the other videos. But for now, all you need to know is that we've got a blank slide and the background is now transparent. Notice that you don't actually see that it's transparent yet. So just do bear in mind that and make sure you remember because if you have it as color fill and it's set to black, you might come into here and think it looks familiar and uh, forget that it hasn't actually been made transparent. So just double check that that is selected as no fill. When we export this as a movie file, um, then the uh, the black will basically just be transparent. So anything that's black now will be transparent when we export it. So yes, as I say, let's just have a think about what we want in a lower third. And by the way, if you want to get any inspiration for lower thirds, if you want to get inspiration from sort of professional media, then you could search for... BBC lower third, Fox lower third, CNN lower third, whatever you you your uh, the uh, the broadcaster that you're looking to emulate, and uh, just do a Google search. You'll find the sort of elements and the styles that they have, and you could perhaps try and emulate some of those. Or if there's anybody else who's got a channel and you like the look of their things, then you can uh, easily find things to emulate without necessarily copying. It's just sort of taking cues and in terms of the sort of format and layout. So now. With that said, we've now got our blank canvas. This is where I was up to before. Uh, I thought we would make something like uh, a sort of pill shape, a little bit different to what I'd done before. So if I grab a, uh, not a circle, but a rounded rectangle. Uh, so that's this one. So I'm just going to the uh, shapes up at the top. Uh, and then I've got this rounded rectangle and I can pull it out to any shape. Now what you'll notice about the rounded rectangle is it's got the little, uh, handles on the corners where you can drag it uh, to make it bigger and smaller but also in just one corner you'll see this little green dot and if you grab on that and pull it out then you'll see that what that's changing is the sort of radius of the corners and you'll reach a point where you can't turn it anymore can't pull it anymore because you now have a complete sort of semicircle at one end so I thought we'd make something that looks a little bit like this shape and if I drag this down into the bottom corner where we want our lower third to appear maybe just elongate it a little bit and then let me grab my uh, logo that we had earlier so what I thought is perhaps if we had something maybe something like this so you'll notice that when you move things around in Keynote it actually aligns them so it sort of snaps down to that center line so that's now on the center line or if I moved it to the middle it will slap, uh, snap to the center so I thought, well, if I put this over here, then perhaps uh, maybe move the two of them in a little bit. And then let's have another one of these sort of pill shapes. And I'll just delete this one. Uh, let me change the color of this one now. So it, this is in the style tab of the inspector. If this isn't open, then you would come up to this format button here. And then you've got 
style, text, and arrangement. Arrangement is position and size, and the style is obviously all the colors and borders and things like that. So let's give this one a color. Now, what I actually did in my uh, full tutorial is we sort of grabbed this uh, this background image. Let me just flick back to here. I hope this isn't too confusing. But this background image we actually got from a, a place called uh, unsplash.com and I did a video all about how to use these images in yours and it means that if you change your slide master in the background then it means you can easily switch out this uh, this sort of background that I've got here and change the entire look of your presentation by simply changing the slide uh, master in the background uh, but anyway I digress what I did was I went through this image let me just zoom out so you can see it a little bit better I went through this image and I just grabbed some little colors or some colors rather uh, with the color picker. So here you can take the color picker and you can just hold this over any uh, color and pick on it. And then once it appears in your color picker, you can just drag that into your palette and put it wherever you want. And then that means you've got that color to use. And so what I did was I just grabbed a few different colors from that uh, picture and dropped them up into the top here. So these five colors have basically all come out of this, uh, this image. And so that's the color palette that I'm going to use when I make this lower third. And then what we'll do at the end is when I've exported it, I'll show you how these overlays look in my uh, Ecamm Live and we'll use this lower third over the top of it. So let me come back to that original drawing that we were just doing, that original uh, lower third. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, so if we make this, uh, bearing in mind the color of that background is like this light blue down here. So we want something that's gonna contrast that if we're gonna use it with those scenes. So let's have the sort of deep purple perhaps as the base color. Might be an idea to have a uh, border around that just to give it a bit more definition. So I'll come back over here, move this so that it's nice and centered. And then here with these objects, we've got the color fill uh, and we've got the border. So here, if I click on a line border, you'll see that it will just pop a border around it. In fact, that wants to be uh, a white color. I think just to make it stand out more. And then we'll do the same with this one. Uh, one second, change the color to white. Ah, it already is white. <laughs> Silly me, I wasn't looking properly. <laughs> uh, so the other thing you can do with these is if you want to give them like a, rather than a solid color, you can actually have a gradient color. So we could change that so that it changes from, uh, let's say it changes from that purple color to the lighter purple perhaps. So from here, when we click on this one, goes to the lighter color and then you can change the angle of it. So there we go, it's sort of fading from one to another. Uh, in fact, we could have that sort of bleeding out from this uh, this blue color that we've got in the logo. And then the next thing, if I just move this one down here, we can put this one inside. In fact, I don't think that one needs a border. So let me just take the border off that one after all. So I'll put no border in there. And this can be a place for, as you'll see what I'll do, I'll put our name or something like that in there. Uh, make this a little bit bigger so that you can see perhaps in fact let me hide this slide from the side I'm trying to uh, make a bit more space on the screen so that you can see everything clearly uh, so this one now we want this one to be in front of this uh, and so there's a little thing for you to know here is if you go into this little view panel in the top corner this is where you select whether you want this slide showing so navigator shows the slides down the side or slide only is obviously the view we're in at the moment or if you want to see all of the slides uh, uh, together you can use that one but because we're only using one slide I think this is fine but the one you want to have a look at is this object list because this at the side will show you all the different objects so we've got our logo which is actually a group of uh, objects and then we've got our purple rounded rectangle at the bottom there and then we've got this blue rounded rectangle at the top well we want that one to be below the logo so think of this like layers and the one that's at the top is at the top of the stack and the one that's at the bottom is the, at the bottom of the stack so if I move this rounded rectangle here this light blue one down then you can see that now it's come to underneath that uh, object there and if I moved it down again it would move right to the bottom of the stack and be completely out of view so that's obviously not what we want we want it here now what I thought is oops daisy I've moved it too far we want it down here there we go that's where it should be <laughs> 
So then let's have a little think about this and what color we want that. Maybe uh, a blue is okay for there, or maybe we can make it orange. Oops, daisy. Yeah, this is one thing I've mentioned this before in videos, but when you are changing colors, you might think because you have got uh, something selected that you're filling that. But in this case, I was, I'd highlighted this box, but I've still got the uh, little color wheel here highlighted. So what I'm actually changing there is the border. So I don't want to change the border of that. I actually want to change this box and I want to change the background color of it. Uh, in fact, I think I'll leave that one as it is for the moment. So now let's have a think about some text that we might want to add into there. Uh, so let me grab my text from the top. One second. So here in the top, you've got your little text tool. So we can click there to add some text. And then I'll just write your awesome name. And then we can drag that down here. And then maybe we want your title. So we can just, I'm pressing option by the way, or alt rather, an option. Uh, so you can, if you click on any object and hold down the, uh, the option key on the Mac, then you can just drag it and it will duplicate it automatically. And uh, let's put uh, chief YouTuber, there we go. So uh, let's just align those as well so that they uh, look right on the screen. And in fact, I could probably hide this color for now. Uh, change the text. So this is again in the format. And now we come into the text panel and let's align that to the left. And this one we can align to the left as well. And then you can also align objects. So if I click on this one and this one together, so I've highlighted those two text items and then you right click, then you can uh, align objects to the left. And so you can see it just neatly lines them up to the left. So we perhaps want to make the name a little bit bigger perhaps. So I can just come over to the, uh, the font and the typeface and we'll just increase the uh, font weight. And then maybe this one might want to be a little bit smaller. And just to add some extra little detail, just to show you how the animation works, I might just add a couple of little features on here, uh, just for, uh, as I say, just for an example. And I can show you how this features into the animation. Just zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can see all of this okay. And I'll just make that a little bit smaller. You'll see what I'm trying to do in a minute, hopefully. So if I change the color of this one, so make sure we've got the uh, on the style tab of the inspector and make sure we've got the color wheel selected. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and grab one of these other colors that we had, which was, let's say this one. And then I'm going to just drag this across. I'm not sure that these colors work to together very well, to be honest with you, <laughs> but it is just for a demonstration. In fact, let's be uh, let's actually fade the, some of these out so I could fade that one down a little bit fade this one down a little bit. In fact, more I look at that, the worse it seems to look. But there you go. <laughs> it is just an example after all. Uh, so this is just something I'm throwing together for uh, for example purposes. I'm making excuses now, aren't I? But never mind. In fact, let's make this one a little bit bigger. Another way you can increase font is just by pressing the command and the plus when you've got the, uh, the text selected. So you can make it bigger or smaller that way. Right, so we've got a few different elements there. So now what we want to do is make them animate in. So uh, let's open up the animation inspector. So that for that, we come up to the, uh, the top corner here again and click on animate. And now it opens up these animate controls. Now I've done another video about animation for how to do uh, full screen animations. Uh, so if you've watched that, you may be familiar, but if not, then uh, first of all, I'll link to that video, obviously, of course. Uh, but basically with animations, there are three sort of groups of, uh, of actions that you can have, either things building into the scene, which is where they are not in the scene and then they appear somehow. Uh, there's also the action, which is something where it is on the on the screen. Think of it as on stage almost and something happens to it. And then there is the build out. Whoops, I've moved my screen instead of highlighted it. <laughs> and then there's the build out, which is where something is on the screen or on stage, if you like, and then exits the stage. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with all of this off the screen. And so uh, you don't actually move anything physically off but we're going to use this build in function for each of these different objects and we're going to have them appear on the screen so 
The first one that we may want to appear is at some, somehow we're going to have to have these background, the sort of pill shapes. We're going to have to have those appear and the logo appear. So perhaps it might be good to have the, um, the logo and the pill shape sort of appearing first and then have the writing build out afterwards. So let's go to this build in and then make sure we've got the first thing selected. So I'll select the logo first and then we'll go to uh, the build in here. And then you can see that there is uh, a number of options for different uh, different ways that it can come in. So you can have it either appear, so it's not there, and then it just appears. You can have it blurs in, dissolve in, so it sort of fades in, drift in, uh, drift and scale, uh, drops from above. So. It's a case really of just going through and having a look at all of these and you can click on this little preview button for each one to see what happens. So I won't go through every single animation, but as I say, just go and have a look through and see which ones you like. Personally, if you want some advice, I would say uh, use them sparingly. And uh, if something looks a little bit too over the top, it probably is. <laughs> and also bear in mind that when you've got multiple stages to build out, then uh, sometimes you may think that something's only small and not doesn't take too long. But uh, when you start adding all of these different elements together, sometimes it can become a little bit too busy on the screen and uh, almost a little bit distracting. I do think it's good to have some animation because at the end of the day, the point of these lower thirds, if you're having them animated in is presumably because you do want to actually draw people's attention to them but you just want them to draw their attention to them initially so that they see them and register them uh, mentally uh, but then they get back to actually the content you don't want them to be distracted by spinning uh, icons and all these sorts of things going on and being too busy down in the corner that's just my opinion <laughs> other opinion other opinions are available so let's say that we want the logo to uh, Actually, this one that was selected is probably quite good. Just have it scaling in like this, uh, or maybe we could have it scale the other way, something like that. So it's going to just scale in. And then, uh, so once you've chosen the one you want, you actually click on it. And then you've got a few different uh, choices. You can change the uh, duration of it, so how long it's going to take to scale in. You can also change the direction. So here you can change it between and then there's a preview button here, as you can see, this preview button. So you can have it either scale down or you can have it scale up. So let's have it scale up. Uh, and then there's the order, but we'll come to the order in a moment. And then you can have this bounce thing, which is, I guess, just a sort of ending. Let's have a look. So you can see how it just sort of pops a little bit at the end. So we could perhaps leave that on. It's only a slight difference, but here it just comes and scales and stops. Whereas this one, it sort of has a little bounce at the end. Let's leave it like that for the sake of argument. We can uh, always change it later. So the next thing that we want to animate is this main sort of background pill shape. So if we select that one, I think it might look okay if that one just sort of appears or wipes out from one side. And I seem to remember if I click on add an effect, uh, one of the effects down here is wipe. So this one will just sort of swipe it from one side to the other and build it out that way. You could also have uh, it sort of fly in from the side. Uh, lots of different options there. So let's just have this one as wipe so that it builds out. Next one we want to do is this uh, sort of other pill shape here. So just to give it a bit of a change, let's come in here and maybe let's make this one to be the move in. Uh, perhaps like that, or maybe that looks a bit strange coming from behind the other one. I'm just uh, guessing here and making these all up. There we go, have that one, how about that? It will just uh, appear from the center and sort of wipe out like that. Uh, so we'll go with that one. And again, with these, you can have a look at these different options. You've got the duration and you've got whether it wipes in or out. So let's change that to out. So there you see it comes from the outside into the center as opposed from the center to the outside. So there's not many tweaks that you can do to these really. So it's quite easy to just go through and have a little look. Uh, and then uh, you can look at the time. I think one second, it might not sound like a lot, but it actually is when you start adding up multiple actions. So I'm just going to drop this down to half a second. And then I'm also going to do the same with that main uh, one that we had as well, the large pill shape. So I'll drop that down to half a second and then Perhaps these little circles here can just sort of appear one after another. So let me add an action to that and I'll just have those sort of dissolve in. So that's where they're going to sort of fade like this. 
and then once again I'll change the uh, timing on those so I'll change that down to half a second as well and we can always preview that as well so we click on this preview button at the top so you can see how those are going to come in so I think that works quite well as well even though the colors in my opinion don't actually match that well <laughs> but there you go uh, and then finally we want to build out this text now there are a few extra uh, options that you've got when it comes to text in terms of uh, building them out uh, because obviously there is uh, there is text you can do things like uh, this now where's it gone typewriter I think it's called or keyboard there we go we've got this one if I preview it you can see it sort of has the flashing cursor cursor and looks like it's uh, typing the thing out and uh, there's one that I use that you probably will see it as soon as I show you this you will realize uh, that I've been using it quite a lot in my uh, things and it's one called trace now where has it gone uh, one second and the reason I like this is because it's right there at the bottom actually there that one the reason why I like this one is because it kind of looks like it's a more complicated animation than it is um, and without looking too over the top in my opinion but again you'll have to judge for yourself so you can see what that does it sort of like builds the whole thing out and sort of traces over the outline of it and you'll recognize that that I use it in the start of my uh, my intro my title sequence and also I use it on my lower third as well and I just think it has enough movement to look uh, interesting without being too flashy and by the way if you want to have flashy then we can do that as well we've got the uh, confetti <laughs> or we've got uh, fireworks if you want to see your name really up in lights or flame <laughs> You can see you can really go uh, really go overboard with these and uh, that one looks okay I think the lens flare again it just sort of draws the eye in without being too over the top uh, if I had to choose between the lens flare or the flame I think probably the uh, lens flare <laughs> would be my uh, my choice in fact let's leave the uh, lens flare shall we just uh, for the sake of this demonstration so I'll click that one in and uh, we'll leave that that actually although that's one and a half seconds I think the if you made it much quicker than that it would probably look a little bit too quick and you would miss the effect of it so like that I think you just don't really see the whole point of it whereas uh, because it actually goes across the full screen the actual time for the text to build out is actually considerably less than the full second and a half so if you watch most of the time is taken up by the uh, the actual lens flare going across the screen so I think that a second and a half is okay for that now let's come down to this one you uh, chief youtuber and then we'll add an effect here and then perhaps for this one we can use one of my favorites that trace one so there we go that will build out like that but that is a little bit on the slow side so I'll just drop that one down to maybe a second and then we'll preview that one right so now we've got all of those things happening but they're all happening at the moment one after the other which is not what we want we don't want to wait for every th single thing to happen but down at the bottom you can see that there's this button here build order and if I just drag the build order panel over if you click on that build order it has this little pop out window and so that is uh, where we can see the order of our build and what you can also see is all of these different elements or objects that we've got in our object viewer on the left hand side are now featured in the build order and uh, what you can see is these numbers down the side is the build number so these things these little animations are all called builds and so what you can do here is you can select the order so we could just drag and rearrange them to be in a different order but also you can adjust the sort of timings between them and the triggers so the first one is going to start when the slide starts but then we can have this one at the moment it is on click bear in mind that this is actually a presentation software it's designed for making presentations so the on click would be if you've got one of these little clickers to advance the slide in your presentation then that's what you would use or with a mouse click but obviously we're not actually doing this as a presentation we want to use this to create a little animated movie a movie animation so we don't want it to happen on click because we want to export this and just do it all automatically so the way we do that is we want the uh, this to animate first the logo and then we want that larger pill shape at the back to animate out so instead of starting on click what we want is we want to click here and say with build one because we want it to start or after build one so then if we click after it would happen immediately after that so if I preview 
you can see that would happen and then that one or we could have it happen at the same time so if I click with build one we could have it happen at the same time uh, or you might want to stagger it a little bit by having it start with build one but just work in a little bit of a delay so perhaps that might be the way to do it uh, I think that works well because it means the logo has zoomed sufficiently that you don't actually see the start of the sort of pill shape uh, but then it means you don't have to wait for it to have finished uh, first either the next one we want is the rounded rectangle so let's have that happen as well with build one and maybe that one let's have a little have a look how that works mm, the timing of that is not so good either so let's maybe make that after build two and try that uh, and then what we want to have is uh, these little icons here to build out so we'll have those happen after the uh, this one is wiped out so i'll have that one with uh, after build three after build four oops and after build five so if I just preview this, you can see how we've got this section. There's no gaps between these elements in the uh, in the build order, rather, between these builds. So the these uh, ones that are all sort of seem to be grouped together at the top from the logo down to the circle, they are all sort of working either with each other or consecutively after each other. There we go. It's starting to look like something now. And then we just need to add the same in for these uh, text elements. So let's say that the this text Maybe actually the text could be starting somewhere around about here. You can actually just drag it straight up and into place. So then that's going to happen after build three. And then maybe we want the circle to start happening at the same time with build four. And then this last one we can have happening maybe after or with build seven. So let's have a look how this all looks together now. Maybe that writing needs to go up there as well. You can just play around with this and tweak and see what uh, looks right. So there we go. Have that with build five and that with build four. It's just a case really of playing with it and seeing what you think looks right. So how does that look? It's uh, it's something, isn't it? <laughs> it may not be your uh, to your taste, uh, but certainly I hope it shows you how you can create these things uh, in pretty much very little time. How long has this been? Uh, 30 minutes with a bit of faffing about showing you various different things, but you can really build these out quite quickly. And there's lots of other different styles that you might want to use. And you've obviously got all of the shapes that you have at your disposal in the shape builder. So perhaps you might want to have something that was more like a box shape, something like this. Uh, same sort of format, maybe something like this. Just think of everything as little building blocks. So you might have a place for your logo here, then you've got a place for your writing here, or perhaps you want to have something that is more sort of angular. So you'd come down to your shapes, maybe take something like this and have a uh, more like this shape on the end of it. Uh, you can see how quickly you can basically build up something that would look uh, yeah, however you want it to look and you can emulate whatever lower third that you can imagine. It doesn't take uh, too long to build it all out in here. So that is how we build it out. But we have, there's one thing that we haven't done, and that is we haven't actually got it into our Ecamm Live or OBS yet, have we? So I'm going to show you how to do it into Ecamm Live, but presumably if you know how to import videos into OBS, you will be able to import this into there as well. And the way that we do that is we export this first from Keynote and we go up to the File menu and then we come down to Export and we want to export to uh, Movie. And this will bring up a window and there's a few things to note in here the uh, first is that the playback is self-playing obviously because we want this to just play on its own again bear in mind that keynote is designed for making slides and presentations and so the export to movie function is designed to be able to export your whole slide pack to have it as a self-running movie and so that's why there's some of these options here which might not seem obviously needed to us but that's because of what is actually intended for as a piece of software so the slides, you can select which slides to export. So bear in mind, if you've got a template that you're using and you've got lots of different slides or a different animation on each slide, you're going to want to maybe only export one at a time. So you would just select the particular slide that you wanted. As it happens, we've only got one slide in this presentation, so I can leave that on all. Uh, the go to next slide, again, that comes back to if you had a full presentation, you might want to work in some timings to pause between advancing to the next slide. And so that's what that's for. But we don't need that at all. So I can just make that a zero uh, and then go to the next build. So that comes down to 
where we've set up all of our timings for each build in our animation uh, so we don't need to worry about that but if you had slides with text on where you would have been using a sort of clicker <laughs> uh, manually during the presentation um, then if you wanted to export that to a movie this is where you could sort of build in a predefined time between those builds but as I say we've already done all of that in our animation so I'm going to change that to a zero as well the resolution, well, we've set this to sort of widescreen, so 1920 by 1080. Uh, you could change that to, you know, uh, 6K if you wanted or a smaller resolution, whatever you want. Uh, then the frame rate, you can choose that. I'm using 30 frames per second on my filming and my uh, Ecamm Live output, so I've just matched that to my frame rate there. And then the other thing is when you load up the uh, Keynote as a fresh install uh, the compression type will be set to h264 now what we need to do is we need to change that to this apple ProRes uh, 4444 because that will then make this option here available to us which is export with transparent background and if you remember right back at the beginning we made our slides have a transparent background so we need to have that in because obviously we want this lower third appearing over the top of our productions not with a black background so key, leave that as export with transparent background and click on the next button now it will pop up the little familiar apple window and we can change this to here I'll just put it in here, lower third, and save that. So it's saving this as a movie file. And now what I can do is I can come back over to my uh, Ecamm Live. And I can show you when it's finished how this all looks. So just one second, I'll come out from here. Uh, and back to this screen. There we go. <laughs> right. So if I share my whole screen in demo mode on Ecamm Live, then now you should be able to see this. This is where I've got my folder with my, uh, this is my free overlay pack. And this actually, if I just run this one, this is the first lower third I made. Looks a little bit similar, but slightly different style, just so that you can get an idea of what is in that other pack that you can get from the website. Uh, but then we've got this new one, which is this one. So if I just preview that, that's what that one looks like. Now what I'll do is I'll actually come over to uh, one of those scenes that I made before. And uh, let's come over to this main scene. There we go. <laughs> so I did a main scene. I did one with uh, screen sharing, which was this one. So these are all in that uh, template pack, which you can download from the website. But if I just come back into this one, and what I'll do is I'll show you how we're gonna add that lower third over the top of the uh, this scene. And it's really simple in, uh, as most things are in Ecamm Live. And it's down at the bottom here, and you click in the, uh, this is, sorry, <laughs> I should tell you which panel we're looking in first, shouldn't I? We're in the overlays panel of Ecamm Live. And if you're not familiar with where that is, then you can come into uh, the interface here and it's just up at the top corner here where you can show and hide that particular panel or you can get it in the um, window menu. You can see all of these different windows that you have available. You can activate them from in there. So we are in the overlays. Incidentally, if you are coming from OBS and you're watching this, then uh, you might want to try Ecamm Live. I came from OBS. I started uh, looking to do uh, some video production work for a sort of side project, not for this YouTube channel, long before this YouTube channel was even in existence. And uh, yeah, I used OBS, but I found a number of issues with it. And uh, particularly not with the software itself, I should point out, but specifically because I'm using a rather old and uh, dated Mac and it just couldn't handle what I was trying to do with it. Certainly not handling the sort of number of scenes that you can see that I've got open down here uh, and all different feeds coming into it I found that uh, my machine was quite uh, slowed down by it and it just really wouldn't run and the output wasn't good and so that's when I uh, I found Ecamm Live and so if you'd like to try Ecamm Live then you can head over to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm to get your free trial and uh, yeah it really is a um, uh, an, am an amazing feat in terms of the coding that they've done to get this to run on a 2013 MacBook uh, and be able to do live streaming and all this live production in this package. It's, uh, yeah, I'm very impressed by their coding skills. I'm still waiting on the 16 inch uh, M series MacBook, but uh, unfortunately didn't come out at WWDC this year. So hopefully it will be coming out a little bit later in the year. But until then, 
I, uh, I was going to say I'll struggle on with my machine, but I'm really not struggling with Ecamm Live on it. So there you go. That's a bit of a digression. Let me come back to my demo scene and I'll show you how easy it is to add in these overlays. So here we go. We've got my uh, pretty uh, border now, my pretty overlay. Don't forget to go and grab your copy at the website. And all we do is we come into our scenes and sorry, our overlays tab and come down to the bottom and you can add either a picture overlay, a countdown timer, a web widget, a camera source, another folder, text, but we want this one, the one that looks like a little image with the whoosh marks <laughs> to signify that that is an animated overlay or a movie file. So we click on that and it should open up the little window and I can just go into my lower third here and then if I click on open, there you go, it's come in already. So let me just come out from here a minute and I'll just get the full effect for that because we want to see how that looks. So if I come out of demo, demo mode for a moment, here we go. So whoops a daisy, I put my lower third over the top of it there. Press the wrong button on my stream deck, I do beg your pardon. <laughs> here we go. So hopefully you can see that full screen now and I'll just activate that lower third. And I think that because we use those colors that are complementary, it actually looks a little bit better on this screen than it did on the black screen. I probably could play around with the alignment of it a little bit because uh, the way it works on this scene, it looks a little bit odd that it is in the position it is, but no problem. If I come back here to my demo mode, uh, this is simply a uh, image. So we could put that wherever we wanted, but we could just move this down and we could actually make it fit right in that corner, maybe I don't know whether it would go right on that line, perhaps, or maybe it would go so the radius is matching. This is my OCD, you see. I like to have the sort of centers of any radiuses that are, or radii that are going to match. So you see the radius of this one here. In fact, let me just hide the UI off there. There we go. Um, yeah, I would want that to be matching somewhere around about here. You can fine tune it with the little plus and uh, up and down and left and right arrows. So perhaps that would go somewhere like that. I'm never going to get this right. I should go back in and tweak it if it was uh, if it was me. But I think it looks good as it is just there. So let me uh, just come out of this for a moment. Uh, I'm waffling. I call myself on my uh, bio a recovering perfectionist. And this is the sorts of things that go through my head. Uh, and this whole channel is an exercise in uh, getting out of that mindset and not being quite such a perfectionist. So... Uh, that I think does look okay and I can probably release that to the world and be relatively happy about it now that I've uh, recovered slightly from my perfectionism. So with that said, I think that that has given you a pretty good idea of how to make an animated overlay in uh, Keynote or Ecamm Live or OBS. If you found this useful, then do go down and give me a like and subscribe. Incidentally, you can see now that my lower third doesn't match my uh, other one does it <laughs> it doesn't match my like and subscribe so what i'll do is i'll also make a video of how you can make an animated like and subscribe button for your channel as well in fact let me come back to my main view so that everything matches once again and the world is in harmony <laughs> So yeah, do go down, hit that like and subscribe button. And until the next time, I'll link to some other videos over on the right hand side and uh, have an absolutely wonderful day. 